Good evening and welcome to our Advent uh, carol service. Um, as far as notices go, um, just to say, as well as our uh, Sunday morning services that are going to be live streamed um, for, from now on, uh, we hope, um, next Sunday is going to be when we have our Chris Dingle service at five o'clock and we'll be putting on Facebook and on the YouTube channel um, uh, instructions as to how to make your own Chris Dingle. So we hope that uh, those who are young or young at heart might join us five o'clock uh, next Sunday. It's going to be a bit different. And today's service is different. I haven't got my normal congregation in front of me. I'm looking at a camera. But the heart of the service is exactly the same as it is every year. We come remembering how 2,000 years ago the people of Israel were longing for their Messiah. We remember how today we are longing for God's help, God to come again. I hope this service will inspire our prayers. I hope it will help us to make space for Christ to come into our lives this Advent, this Christmas. And I hope that we'll also unite in our hope, steadfast and certain. God's promise that one day he will come again and wipe away every tear. Not just the end of lockdown, but death will be no more. And God promises that in the meantime, he is with us and wants to work with us and hear our prayer. So a moment of silence and then the service will start.
The first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Thanks be to God. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. Beloved in Christ, as we prepare this Advent to celebrate the birth of the Christ child, let us hear again in the words of the Scriptures the story of God's loving purpose in our creation and redemption. Let us bring to mind the goodness of God in calling the creation into his light, 
his mercy in Christ Jesus in drawing us from the darkness of sin and his grace to us and to all sinners in summoning us by his Holy Spirit as the dawn of his kingdom breaks upon us. But first, let us pray for ourselves and for all people, acknowledging before God our sins and the sins of the world, bringing before him our needs and the needs of those who dwell in the darkness of sickness, injustice, want and fear, commending to him especially those who live without the hope we have in our Saviour Jesus Christ. And let us bring our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. second lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 2. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze their young shall, the cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
lesson is taken from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. fourth lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. 
and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Thanks be to God. lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, 
Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and for evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God.
reading from John's Gospel, chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who don't believe are condemned already because they've not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Thanks be to God. at all times. Let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. Then let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may seek Christ in the scriptures 
and recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, as your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, first came to seek and to save the lost, so may he come again to find in us the completion of his redeeming work. For he is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for eternal life. Amen. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit by whose work in the Virgin Mary conceives the Christ, help you hear the fruits of holiness. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>